As Freud once said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And sometimes a mop is just a mop. But if you've been down the cleaning aisle recently, I'm sure you've noticed the huge selection of mops available to consumers nowadays. Everything from the old school yacht mops to the fancy new Swiffer sweepers. But which mop is the right mop for you? Well, stick around and we'll help you figure it out. We'll kick things off by talking about some of the more popular mop types and which mops you should use where. And later in the video, I'll share some handy tips and tricks to help you become a mopping master. And also stick around to the very end of the video where I'll be reading some of my favorite comments from last week's video. Like I said, there are many different types of mops gracing the cleaning aisle these days, but let's keep it simple and talk about the most common types of mops. And we might as well start with this one right here. This is the old fashioned yacht mop or string mop or deck mop. It has a lot of names, but I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts. By the way, what does that even mean? Let me know if you know in the comment box below. Well, anyway, I'm willing to bet that most people think about this mop when they picture mop in their head. And the reason is simple. These have been around for hundreds of years. I think we researched and found out it was since the 1400s that you could use a mop like this. And these are great for any heavy duty or outdoor mopping jobs. The durable cotton fibers are great for cleaning up decks and commercial flooring and are highly absorbent, but they do not leave a streak free finish, which is why they're not the best for indoor jobs. A ringer bucket is very important to get rid of excess water before taking mop to floor. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? This sponge mop does. A little cleaning humor for you there. Sponge mops have been around for quite a while and are particularly a good choice for cleaning linoleum floors and for cleaning walls. That's one of my favorites. This sponge can scrub well, but it does streak because it doesn't always ring out entirely and they can also be difficult to ring out. They're also difficult to keep clean, but they are especially great for cleaning walls because the sponge can reach high and really scrub away at any stains or buildup. Next up to play, we have one of my personal favorites, a microfiber mop. And as you can see, this looks a lot like the yacht mop, but instead of cotton fibers, it uses the awesome cleaning power of microfiber. Microfiber mops are a great choice if you're looking for an all-around, all-purpose mop. It's hybrid in the sense that it has the ability to do the heavy-duty mopping like a yacht mop would, but the microfiber strands are delicate enough and thin enough that a hardwood floor, a stone floor, or a tile floor can tolerate it. Plus, they're super absorbent and they don't leave streaks behind. They need to be wrung out well in order not to leave any streaks so having a great ringer bucket is absolutely crucial. When people ask me for an all around multi-purpose mop for tile, stone and hardwood, this is the one that I suggest. This is a flathead mop and this particular mop also features a reservoir which can hold a cleaning solution which can be sprayed directly onto the floor in front of it via this little nozzle right here. This mop is a good choice if you have floors that are hardwood or laminate. Since these floors can't take too much moisture, these mops are designed to spray out just a little bit of cleaning solution and then quickly wipe it up with the mopping pad. The benefit is that there is little to no streaking and the floors get quite shiny. I also like these for marble or granite floors because they use just a bit of moisture and allow for a nice polish from the microfiber pad. Just make sure you're using the correct cleaner and guys, we have lots of videos on that topic. It's ideal to have a couple of spare pads so that you can replace them if one gets too wet, which of course will lead to streaking. Remember to launder the pads after each use. Finally, let's talk about dry mops or dust mops like the Swiffer Sweeper. These have become very popular in recent years because these mops are great for maintaining the flooring in smaller spaces or if you have a small amount of hard floors in your home and you don't want to schlep out a whole mopping situation every time you want to give it the old once over or if you just need it for a simple, quick midweek cleanup. 
Personally, I like to use this mop for touch-up cleans in between cleanings to maintain floors, especially with all the cat hair we have going on. It picks up dust and hair and is more so considered a replacement for a broom than a direct replacement for a traditional mop. They do not remove heavy soil and they may leave some debris behind. They also don't clean or shine the floor. Generally, you use these dry unless you use the wet version. Even still, these are only for light duty cleanings. You're welcome to purchase refills if you like. I just use a microfiber cloth and if I want a little bit of moisture, I spritz some soapy water on it and get going. These are also great for dusting walls and getting into high corners. Who would have thought? All right, so now that we know what each mop is for, let's talk about a few best practices to get the most out of your time spent on mopping. First up, you always want to mop in my famous S pattern, regardless of the type of mop you're using, because this allows you to focus on one specific area at a time without flicking water and debris everywhere. Be sure to sweep or vacuum your floor and get as much debris off the floor as possible because if you don't, you're just going to push it all around the room with the mop otherwise and that's more work for you. If you're using a mop which requires a bucket of soapy water, I recommend using very warm, borderline hot water and just a few drops of dish liquid and if you're feeling super fine, you can throw in a couple drops of your favorite essential oil. That's really all you need for almost any flooring surfaces. But if you're using a specialty floor cleaner, do be sure to read the instructions before setting up your mop bucket. Use as little water as possible. This isn't about slopping a huge puddle of water across the floor. That's actually quite damaging, especially to hardwood and laminate floors, not to mention it is more work for you to have to mop up. You always want to be using a lightly damp mop head. So remember this when you're wringing out your mop and give her an extra turn just for me. When mopping hardwood, always work in the direction of the grain. This helps reduce the appearance of streaking. Like we talked about in last week's vacuuming video, you always want to start the job at the opposite corner of your exit point. You want to mop your way out of a room, not mop yourself into a corner. And always keep your bucket behind you. Use your arm muscles, not your back muscles, when you're mopping in an S pattern. It's easy to start using your back to move the mop back and forth, but that can cause back strain and nobody wants that. It is not a cool story to say that you put your back out from mopping. So always remember to use your arm muscles for this job. Lastly, take your time. As much as you want the mopping to be over and done with as soon as possible and get on with life, the old saying, anything worth doing is worth doing right, really rings true here. If you take your time, you'll do a great job and the payoff will be worth it. In my experience, mopping has become that chore which rarely gets love these days. As much as modern mops like these have made it seem like you only need to drag a mop around the floor for three minutes, let me tell you, there's something therapeutic about taking your time and giving your floors the attention they need. I mean, with mopping, because you all know how I feel about vacuuming. That brings me to our common question, and this week, I want to know when was the last time you mopped your floor and which mop of these or maybe another mop do you use in your home? Leave us a comment in the comment section down below because there's nothing I love more than sitting on my couch Saturday mornings and reading what you have to say. There's a button down there that lets me know you care so click it if you liked this video and if you haven't done so already click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And now, a rather new addition to Clean My Space videos where I react to your comments or comment on your comments. This one comes from His and Her Money. I love vacuuming, however, I just realized after watching your video that I was using the dust attachment to vacuum the stairs. Is there an attachment that works best for carpeted stairs? Thanks, Ty. Hi, Ty. Okay, what you can do is you can use the upholstery brush to vacuum your stairs, which might make things a little bit easier. I'm assuming you're using a canister, so give that one a try. Kelly S says, love vacuuming, hate olives. Now, how do I best clean hair off the beater brush of my vacuum cleaner? And that's a good question too. We have a video on that called how to clean 
your cleaning tools. But basically what you can do is you can take a pair of scissors and cut along the row of hair stuck in your beta bar, or you can use a seam ripper. So go Google that. Uh, Cab4292 says, I enjoy vacuuming, but hate cleaning the kitchen with a passion. Any tips on getting over the hate? Get a punching bag. Be Rich 33 says vacuuming blows. Yes. Yes, it does. Monkey Heart Spad 3Y says, Do you have a specific vacuum you would recommend for a hardwood floor? Yes, I do. Any canister vacuum that has a hard floor attachment I think would be great. I find uprights might not have exactly what you need, although some of them might come with the brushes but I really think just go for a canister with a hard floor attachment. Smarts007 says, as a person with no carpet anywhere in my home, I love vacuuming and to you I say, I am jealous. Amy Girl 1983 says, my growing family is moving to a much larger house and the floors in the common areas are mostly vinyl that look like hardwood, or as Chad and I say, memories of hardwood. I always hands and knees scrubbed vinyl, but is there a way that I can get a large area really clean without getting streaks? With vinyl, the best thing to do is to use a solution of vinegar and water. A lot of people also talk about stripping and then waxing their vinyl floor, so you might wanna look into that, which can help with shine and uh, perhaps get rid of some of that streaking for you. Mini Dress 360 says, Melissa, do you wear outdoor shoes inside your house? I noticed that you were barefoot in this video. What about guests? Do you ask guests to take off their shoes when they come inside your home? <laughs> okay, so yeah, usually uh, I don't wear shoes inside the house unless I'm like running in to put groceries in the kitchen or something. And yeah, when guests come over, if they're staying downstairs and they've like taken the time to put together a nice outfit and they're looking fly, I won't ask them to take their shoes off and I'll just mentally make a note to clean the floors the next day. However, if they are going upstairs where we have carpets, those shoes are coming off. And also it's seasonal, if it's like the winter, clearly their shoes are going off. Ridge97 says, I never like vacuuming, me neither, but most of my house is old hardwood from 1962, so here comes the dust mop and the wet mop. So Ridge, this one is for you. Thanks so much for your comments, guys. Please keep them coming, and if you like this format, I will do it again next week. I will see you then. Take care.